All right, let's do this. Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome. If you're new here, my name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach. I follow Weight Watchers and I count calories and macros. Happy Sunday and welcome to the video so many of you have been waiting for. A video that I'm excited to film but kind of dreading to film at the same time. This is going to be a massive, massive massive life update. I have so much to share with you guys. We're going to talk about my body scan, plastic surgery, my goal weight, what's happening here with my channel, and something else that I've never shared with you, and that is my weight. I have never told you what I weigh. I tell you how much I lose, gain every single week. I tell you how much I've lost overall. You know that my starting weight was over 300 pounds, but I've never shared with you the weight that I'm at. And today's the day. And there are several reasons why it's it's important for me to share my actual weight with you and we'll get into that in this massive update video. So this is probably going to be a long one so grab a drink, grab a snack, cozy up because we have a lot to talk about. Before we jump in to all of these updates don't forget to subscribe, turn your bell on so you never miss a video. I do upload five videos every single week. And down in the description box, you are going to find nutrition coaching. I am a weight loss and nutrition coach and I offer personalized macros and calories, which is what has contributed to a large amount of weight loss for me, as well as accountability with one-on-one -on -one coaching. And of course, just if you'd like to talk with me directly, you'll also find links and discounts to my favorite things. Anything we talk about in today's video, anything I share with you, I'll put it all down in the description box, as well as my Facebook group. We would love to have you come and join us over there. We're 20 6,000 members strong. It is supportive and it's a great way to keep up with me and ask your questions and of course get support. So all of that will be down in the description box. So where do I begin? I mean, there are so many things that I want to talk with you guys about that I don't even honestly know where to start. Let's start with my body scan. I had a body scan on November 30th of 2022. And I talked about it here on my channel, let you guys know that I was going to have this body scan because I was very interested in how much lean muscle I had, how much fat that I still had to lose or could possibly lose. Where was I with bone density, water? What are my measurements? Where am I as far as being healthy and fit? I just wanted all the information. So I found this CrossFit gym about 45 minutes from me that did a body scan. And basically what you did is you stood on this rotating pedestal, arms at your side, and it just rotated you around really slowly and basically scanned your entire body and did your measurements. I'm going to pop some information here on the screen from you from my body scan so that it makes a little bit more sense when I'm walking through it with you. So the body scan wellness information summarized your body fat percentage, fat mass, lean mass, your body fat percentage rank, comparison to other people of your same gender in your same age group, let you know what your BMR is, which is your basal metabolic rate, and if you had any health risks. So you can see the images of my body scan here. This is my actual body as they took my measurements. Now, one thing that you have to be aware of with these types of body scans, especially for someone like me that's lost a lot of weight, when it's taking my measurements and determining these factors, am I healthy? How much fat do I have? Am I at risk of certain health diseases? It's also taking into account my skin because it's taking a measurement and it doesn't know the difference between fat and skin. And I do have quite a bit of loose skin, especially in places like my back, on the sides here of my breast, my thighs, my stomach. So these measurements and these statistics are also based on the circumference, including my skin. So they are tweaked and skewed just a little bit. So according to the scan, my body fat percentage was 35.9. Now, ideally, you want to be about 28% or less, so this shows that I do still have fat to lose. However, my lean body mass was 61%, which is fantastic. That basically means that I do have a lot of lean muscle. You can see my bone mass, fat mass, lean muscle, so 70% of my total weight was fat. 119% of my total weight was lean mass and then 5.5% was bone mass, along with, some few, with a few other 
types of masses. One thing I want to show you is that my visceral fat was 1.2% and my subcutaneous fat is 4.8%. So visceral fat is what is around your organ. So this is the scary fat. This is the fat that leads to health issues. Mine is extremely low, which made me really happy. And then subcutaneous fat is what just lies under the surface of your skin. Again, mine very, very low. So these two numbers, along with my lean muscle mass and lean body mass, made me really happy. It also showed my body composition position, you can see that I have again have a fat mass of 35.9% and then 64% of my body is fat free mass. So you can say, see that I rank average when it comes to fat. I'm a, I have an average amount of fat on my body, which means technically I don't have to lose any more fat. However, to get to the fit category, I would need to lose about eight pounds at the time of this body scan. So for me, that was something I was interested in doing, potentially losing those last eight pounds or so to get from the average amount of fat on my body to a little bit more fit. You can see too that I have 30% lower fat on my body than other women my age. This was also really exciting considering I came from morbidly obese to being healthier and trimmer by 30% more than other women age 47. So you can see that it gave me a fat loss goal of about 8.3 more pounds of fat would put me into the fit rank. It shows that I do five workouts a week or heavy exercise and that I should be able to reach my goal by January 24th, 2023. It's also going to give me my BMR. Basal metabolic rate is basically the calories that your body burns doing nothing. If you laid in bed, if you were in a coma, I would need to eat 1,597 calories. We always want to eat more, several hundred more than our BMR. So this is actually saying that I burn about 27, 15 calories every single day. And in order to be in a mild calorie deficit of about 500 calories per day, which should lead to about a pound of weight loss every week, that I should be eating about 2,209 calories. This falls in line with me calculating my own macros as a weight loss and nutrition coach. And anything below the 2,209 will just put me in a little bit more of a calorie deficit, which should lead to a little bit more than one pound of fat loss per week. But a healthy deficit is about 500 calories per day or one pound per week. It measured my waist circumference, showing that it was putting me at a moderate risk of disease, but you also have to remember that these numbers are going to be skewed because of my loose skin. And I have quite a bit of loose skin on my lower back, which is around my waist area. And my waist to hip ratio also puts me at a high risk. Again, that's where you're going to find a lot of my loose skin. So overall, I have a moderate risk of health diseases based on the measurements of my body scan. Again, these are skewed. Even the woman who owns the CrossFit gym that did my scan said that as soon as I have skin removed, these numbers will look very, very different and I would be in a low risk category for health related diseases. So the body scan overall was very, very informative. I'm so glad that I did it. If you can find one in your area, even if you can find a DEXA, I think it's a DEXA body scan, I highly recommend. It gives you some peace of mind. Knowing that even though your weight may be higher than what the BMI, rec BMI chart recommends, which we don't go by the BMI chart ever. We'll chat about that a little bit more. But I am my weight is substantially higher than the high end on the BMI chart, yet based on my body scan, I am at a healthy weight. Do I have a little bit of fat that I could lose? Sure, but I'm at an average healthy weight, and if I didn't lose another single pound, or an I would still be considered healthy and at a good weight. Now, of course, there's inches that can be lost to put me at a little bit less risk for diseases, but again, that is very skewed due to loose skin. So overall, my body scan just confirmed with me that I'm at a healthy weight, and really, as of November 30th, 2022, I really don't have to lose any more weight, and by losing about eight more pounds, I would go from the average category to the fit category. And with that being said, you guys know that fitness is very important to me. When I started my weight loss journey, it wasn't to become skinny. I never wanted to be skinny. My goal was to be fit and healthy and develop and build solid lean muscle so that I can watch TV and burn calories because that sounds pretty good to me. And the more lean muscle we have on our body, we burn calories at rest. And that's exactly what our goal should be. Not skinny, but lean, fit, and healthy. So would I love to lose those eight pounds to get into the fit category? Absolutely. Will a lot of those eight pounds come off with skin removal surgery? Absolutely. So it put me kind of in that floating space again going, do I try to lose more weight or am I just what I am right now? And then we'll see what happens when and if the skin gets removed. So that leads me into skin. 
and extra skin and skin removal. A few months ago, I spoke with you guys about looking into the possibility of having some cosmetic surgery, some plastic surgery to remove loose skin. Now I've lost almost 140 pounds. So coming with massive weight loss like that, you can expect to have loose skin. I mean, it's really, truly unavoidable. And in fact, a lot of you have said that you're scared to lose a lot of weight because you're going to have loose skin. Let me tell you from personal experience that even if I had two, three, four, five times the loose skin that I have right now, I would do this all over again because loose skin is way better than being 100, 150, 200 pounds overweight, even 50 pounds overweight. The little bit of loose skin that you're going to have is so much less important than all the health risks, how uncomfortable you are overweight, how hard, how it is hard to just move your body and do day-to-day -day tasks. I would, like I said, have loose skin over and over again before ever putting 140 pounds back on my body. But again, with massive weight loss, you can expect to have loose skin and lots of it when you lose over a hundred pounds. Lucky for me, I have been taking a collagen supplement for the last couple of years. I put it in my coffee every morning. I use collagen for her. I will link it down below for you. Collagen helps with skinny elasticity. So that's going to help my skin bounce back the best that it can. Now, the younger you are, the more likely your skin is to bounce back the older you are, the more likely you are to have a little bit more loose skin. And I'm 47 years old, so the likelihood of me having a body like I would have if I lost this weight at 20 is pretty unlikely. I'm going to have a little bit more loose skin. Also, by strength training and building lean muscle, you can essentially fill in some of that loose skin with lean muscle. So that's been a focus for me as well. Now, obviously, you're not gonna fill in all the loose skin, and the only way to get rid of loose skin, the only way is to have it removed by having cosmetic surgery. And like I said, I have some loose skin. I have a little bit of loose skin on my arms. Not a lot. I'm very, very grateful that my arms bounced back and that I've actually been able to build visible lean muscle, especially in my upper body. I have quite a bit of loose skin on my inner thighs. That's one of my main problem areas aesthetically. Now, does it bother me? Is it something that affects my day-to-day -day life? No. By wearing a good compressive legging to the gym, I can run, I can work out, and that skin doesn't flop around. Even even though there is quite a bit of it on my inner thighs. I also have a little bit of loose skin on my stomach. Not a lot, but a little bit where it would warrant having a mini tummy tuck if that was something that I was interested in. It would really firm up that area and flatten out that area. It would definitely make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing where I could wear crop tops or a two-piece bathing suit. Right now, due to the loose skin on my stomach, I would not be comfortable in a two-piece two-piece bathing suit. I even struggle with the loose skin on my thighs and how comfortable I am in a bathing suit. So right now, your girl's wearing a one-piece, but if I were to have a tummy tuck, a mini tummy tuck, that would help that area as well. But for me, my biggest problem area when it comes to loose skin is my back. Now, I carried a lot of weight in my back. As you can see, I'm popping up pictures and things as I'm sharing this with you, so you can see for yourself why I have as much loose skin on my back as I do. Now, luckily, my upper back down to right below my breast has really firmed up. I'm actually getting some muscle definition, and it looks nice and trim and lean. It's my lower back. So below my bra line down to above my butt is where a lot of that loose skin is. And my loose skin has some mass. It's not just floppy loose skin. I mean, it, it flops, but it has some mass to it. So it looks like fat. So when I'm wearing clothing that's tight or revealing in the back area, it looks like I have these rolls of fat. And I'm very, very very self-conscious about it. It is the one area of my body that I truly dislike. And I feel like all the hard work I've put in just doesn't pay off with all of that loose skin on my back. Even the body scan couldn't differ differentiate between skin and fat. And because my skin has some mass to it, it looks like fat and clothing. And it, it's hard. It's hard to be confident in my body when I have that skin on my back. And the other area of my body that has suffered a lot, like I mentioned, is my breasts. I have a lot of loose skin around the bra line. I mean, enough that I can pull it out and I have to tuck it into things along with tucking in my breasts. I had pretty large breasts, so I have a lot of breast tissue, so they just hang there. I mean, TMI, this video is about updates, including loose skin. So they just hang there and they're very unattractive. And like I said, I have to shove all the loose skin here and all of that into any bra. And then I have to deal with all the loose skin on my back 
in conjunction with that. And it just makes me look bigger than I am. I look bigger around than I am. I measure bigger around than I truly am. And even with all of my massive weight loss, my bra size has not changed that much. My cup size has changed, but my around has not changed very much. And that is because I carry a lot of loose skin in that area. I should be several sizes down in bra and in a bra and I'm not. And that is because of the loose skin. So the breast area, the sides here, and my back are my biggest problem areas. Those are the areas that for me, I want to have those remedied so that I feel more confident and that I can really reap all the rewards of the hard work that I've put in to lose almost 140 pounds. So I did quite a bit of research into plastic surgery. I had several plastic surgery consultations. I had one in Tucson. I had one from a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I had a couple of plastic surgery consults with some surgeons in Mexico and Tijuana, and I am excited to announce for the first time here on my channel that not only have I made the official decision to have skin removal surgery, but I have a date booked. I've already paid a deposit. I've already booked my hotel and I am having skin removal surgery on May 17th of this year. I am going to CER Hospital in Tijuana, Mexico, and I am so excited. I have a very good friend who had several plastic surgery procedures from this same hospital, same plastic surgeon. I know several people who have utilized CER Hospital and it has rave, rave, rave reviews. So I'm actually flying down to San Diego on May 16th and then they pick you up, take you over the border into Tijuana where I will spend about a week between having my plastic surgery and then going to the hotel, which is also a 24 hour recovery house. So I'll have 24 hour round the clock care. If I need anything, if I need my bandages changed, if I need food, water, I have a nurse available to me the entire time. And and I have a king bed in my room overlooking the ocean. I mean, what could be better for recovery? So I'll be in Mexico for about a week to go through the plastic surgery process. So what plastic surgery am I having? So I am having what is called a back lift. So what that means is they're going to take my lower back and basically lift it up remove all of the loose skin. So I will have a scar across my entire back line. So basically across where your bra strap goes, I will have a scar there. It'll be covered up by a bra. Will you see it if you don't wear a bra or if you wear a bra that sits lower or higher than your bra line? Absolutely. But it is well worth it to me to get the skin removed on my lower back. I am also having what is called an extended breast lift. So basically the cut and the scar is going to connect to the scar for my back lift and come all the way around and up. And they're going to lift my breast and then I'm having implants put in so that my breast will stay in place. The concern is because I do have quite a lot of breast tissue that if I didn't have implants, there's a possibility that they would continue to droop and sag over time. So putting in breast ham implants just ensures that they stay in place. So these are the two procedures that I've decided to have. I am skipping a tummy tuck. I'm skipping a thigh lift. Honestly, I don't see myself having either of these ever, never say never, but for now I'm just focusing on the areas that cause me the most pain aesthetically and physically. For example, at boot camp, we run a lot. The skin on my back flaps around when I run. Even if I wear compression garments, long line sports bras, tank tops under my sweatshirt or workout top, it still flaps around. So it's something that for me, not only medically, but physically, aesthetically needs to be taken care of. And I'm so excited. I mean, it's just a couple of months away. Can you even believe it? I am going to Mexico and having my plastic surgery by myself. However, my best friend lives in San Diego, so she's 20 minutes away if I need her. Unfortunately, Troy's unable to go because someone needs to stay home and watch our dogs, and it just doesn't make sense for both of us to go, especially because my hotel is 24-hour care. I don't have to worry about any complications or issues that may happen. I will have someone available to me 24 hours a day. So that is the plastic surgery update. So incredibly excited. And on a side note, I know that you guys are very supportive and I really appreciate how supportive you are of me and how, you, how supportive you've been of me on my entire journey. 
If you don't think going to Tijuana is a good idea, or if you don't think you'd ever go to Mexico for plastic surgery, that's fine. But this is what I have chosen to do, and whatever your opinion is on Tijuana or plastic surgery in general isn't going to change my mind, and I wanna make sure that we're keeping the comment section of today's video positive. So if you disagree with me, that's okay. We can agree to disagree, but I'm excited to be going to Mexico and having this plastic surgery. The next update I have is in relation here to my channel. Now, not a whole lot is going to be changing on my channel. I'm still going to be uploading five days a week. I'm still going to be sharing points, macros, calories, all the information on my recipes, but I have chosen to step away from WW a little bit, and I'm actually only going to be tracking in the WW app one to two times per week. On the day that I film my what I eat in a day, and then on the days that I'm filming other recipes like my meal prep, or if I'm doing a recipe video, I'll need to track in the WW app to know the amount of points for you guys. But because I know that calories and macros work so well for me, and it's something that is sustainable for me long term, not only have I used it to take off the weight, but it's something I can continue to do to maintain my weight. I don't feel like I'm on a diet. I'm happy. This is the happiest I've ever been and the most successful I've ever been losing and maintaining weight. That's definitely the road that I want to take long term. So I will still, like I said, be sharing points for everything that I put out here on my channel. But for me personally, I just won't be tracking in the Weight Watchers app other than one to two times per week. Nothing else is changing here on my channel, so all the content that I've been putting out, I'll continue to put out. Let's talk about goal weight. I have been asked literally daily, sometimes multiple times a day, are you at your goal weight? What's your goal weight? You look amazing. You've met your goal weight, so let's chat about it. After having that body scan in November, I set out to lose about five more pounds, knowing that it would be two to three pounds of skin coming off during plastic surgery, but then putting the implants in, it may actually even negate that. So I really wanted to lose the last five to eight pounds to get into the more fit category and just have my overall body fat percentage drop down a little bit. Will I ever be the healthy weight on the BMI chart? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm going to pop up here on the screen what my healthy weight range is for me at my height. And then I'm gonna talk about my weight. And like I said, I have never shared my actual weight here on my channel. I've always shared with you guys how much I've lost, that I started over 300 pounds, but I've never actually told you how much I weigh. And there's multiple reasons for that. Number one, it's personal and it's really nobody's business. And number two, I didn't want that number hanging over my head on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. I wanted to just be able to work my program and get to a weight that I felt was comfortable and sustainable for me. Getting to the weight on the BMI chart is not sustainable for me. In order for me to do that, I would have to lose a lot of my lean muscle that I've worked so hard to build. And the number on the scale just is not important to me. My body, how I feel, how my body looks is way more important to me than the number on the scale or being in the healthy weight of the BMI chart. To be honest with you, most of the population will have a very, very, very hard time sustaining a BMI chart healthy weight, even the high end of the BMI chart. And in order to get there, you would have to lose a big amount of muscle. Your body would have to be very, very lean, meaning that you don't have a lot of lean muscle. And that's just honestly not something I'm interested in. It's taken me a long time to come to terms with that, to know that I'm probably going to weigh way more on the scale than I would have, than I initially set out to weigh when I set out on my health journey. I had a weight loss goal in mind. I had a number in mind. And at this stage in my weight loss journey, I'm not going to hit that number. I honestly don't know that I would ever hit that number. I mean, it would take a lot. It would take a lot, a lot for me to hit that number. And there would have to be some pretty major changes, which would mean pulling back and restricting on my food a little bit in order to lean down to that number. And it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. I want to live my life. I want it to be sustainable. I don't want to reach a weight loss goal number that I can't sustain. What's the point of that? If my weight loss goal is 10 or 15 pounds lower than what's sustainable for me, what's the point of reaching that just to be upset that I gained enough that I gained weight to be at what is a sustainable goal weight for me? I would rather just set a goal in place that is sustainable. So before I share my weight with you, am I at my goal weight? No, I am not at my goal weight. Now, will I be at my goal weight once I have skin removal surgery? 
It's likely. I would still like to lose a few more pounds. I mean, just a couple, like five-ish or so more pounds. And then I wanna see what happens with plastic surgery. By removing the skin, where do I fall after I've recovered from plastic surgery? So I'm probably not going to actually declare that I'm at my goal weight until I've recovered from plastic surgery because that, of course, is going to skew my weight as well. You have to remember the scale measures mass. It doesn't know what the mass is made up of. So the fact that that skin is gone is going to skew the number currently on the scale. So I'm really not going to know if I'm at my goal weight until after I've recovered from plastic surgery. However, however, I feel very, very good where I am. And honestly, if I didn't lose any more weight, I would be okay with that. 100% okay with that. I would like to really recomp my body and continue to build lean muscle. And muscle shows up as mass on the scale. I will tell you that my fitness coach, who has like literally no body fat, I mean, she competes in fitness, she is overweight on the verge of obese on the BMI scale based on her weight. Because again, it is mass on the scale. I am considered overweight on the BMI chart. Actually, let me look it up. I may still be obese. Okay, so I just computed my BMI on just an online BMI calculator, and it shows that my current BMI is 28.7%, and that is the weight that I'm at today. Uh, so I fall in the overweight category. So the overweight category for my height is 25% to 29%. Point nine. So in order for me to be a normal weight on the BMI chart, I would need to have a body fat percentage of 18.5 to 24.9, which means that I have to lose like 4% more to get to a normal weight on the BMI chart. So I just pulled up the ideal weight calculator on calculator.com. Net. So a 47-year-old female who's 5 feet 8 inches, the ideal weight for me is 121.7 pounds to 164.4. Anything above 164.4, I would then be in the overweight category according to the BMI chart. And then it lists out four different formulas to figure out ideal weight. And it looks like it falls between like 138 and 142. That is what is considered ideal for someone my age, my height. So why am I telling you all of this? Why am I sharing all of this with you? Because I weigh 189 pounds. 189. So for me to fall at the high end of the ideal weight, the high end of the BMI chart, I would need to lose 25 pounds. Now, could I lose 25 pounds? Maybe I would be losing a lot of lean muscle. And like I said, I would really have to pull back and restrict my calories. And that's putting me at the high end. Now, if I wanna to get to the ideal weight, let's just say 140, I would need to lose about 50 more pounds. I do not have 50 pounds to lose. I am not interested in losing 50 pounds. I'm not even interested in losing 25 more pounds. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to stay away from focusing your goal weight on the BMI chart and instead focus your ideal weight on you. What fits your body? The more muscle you have, the more you're gonna weigh on the scale, but the leaner and healthier you're going to be, the smaller you're going to look. I am 5'8 and wear a size eight or 10 pants. I don't look like I weigh 189 pounds. I look like I weigh 150, 160 pounds, which is ideal. So you have to remember that what the BMI chart says isn't ideal for everybody and your ideal weight or your goal weight could be completely off the BMI chart. You could still be classified as overweight and it's okay. It's okay not to fall at the BMI chart. And instead of focusing your ideal weight or your goal weight on that number, focus it on what's best for you. So like I said, I'm happy at 189 pounds. I was thrilled to be under 200 pounds and for me, I am not a small person. Between 180 and 190 is a great weight for me, especially because I do have quite a bit of lean muscle on my body and I wanna to continue to build lean muscle. So I wanted to share that with you. I wanted to actually share my weight with you so that you know what I weigh. And those of you that think I'm so tiny and so skinny, I'm still considered overweight on the archaic BMI chart that should not be utilized anymore. So because I've officially shared my weight with you, I will continue to share my weight in my weekly weigh-in videos. I'll now share with you how much I've lost, what my current weight is, and how much I've lost overall. And I hope that by me being transparent and honest and sharing a number that may seem high to a lot of you with you, but is the reality for me, helps you. Helps you realize that we don't have to go off some chart or some ideal, that we have to go off what works for us, what 
lifestyle works for us, and most importantly, what is sustainable for you? What can you keep off forever? Because our goal to our goal of losing weight wasn't to gain it all back and start all over again. But now that the most daunting part of today's video is over, sharing my weight with you, let's wrap up today's huge life update video with a little bit about nutrition coaching. I did open up all access coaching, which allows you to have access to me 24 hours a day. Send me your food blog. I give you food suggestions, workout suggestions. You take photos measurements. It's basically all access coaching, similar to what I have with my fitness coach, but for weight loss and nutrition. And I'm also really excited to announce that I've added another service to my website, and that is a package of five 30 minute coaching sessions. So I've always offered a one-time single 30 minute coaching, coaching session, and then a package of 10 sessions. And a lot of you said that the 10 sessions was a little bit out of your budget, but you would love to have five sessions on my schedule so that we can have one-on-one -on -one coaching together. So I decided to go ahead and add a category for five coaching sessions to my website. It is still a discounted price off of buying five single sessions. And again, it's a great way to have a standing date with me every week, every two weeks, once a month, whatever you prefer on my schedule for coaching. Please keep in mind that when you sign up for nutrition coaching, I am usually one to two weeks out to get you on my schedule. And with plastic surgery coming up, as well as quite a few other trips, that may be extended out a little bit further. So by purchasing a package, you can guarantee a date and time for your coaching session. So I'm really excited that I was able to add that to my website. I will put my nutrition coaching website here on the screen. It is always in the description box for you. You can purchase macros, coaching sessions, all of my recipe eBooks, all of that is found at jenclaytonnutrition.com. So I hope that that helps you guys out a little bit by offering a little bit more affordable package when it comes to coaching. So those are all of my life updates. Like I said, I was excited to share everything with you, but also felt a little bit nervous, especially about goal weight and Weight Watchers and kind of where I am with everything. But like I said, you guys are always so amazing and so supportive, and I wanna be as honest and transparent with you as possible. So I knew that all of the pieces of this video had to come into today had to be put into play and to be shared with you. So of course, in the comments, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, what your thoughts are on everything that I shared with you today. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell's on because there'll be more update videos coming out your way. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. When I was sharing the plastic surgery information with you guys, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to vlog the entire thing. I'm taking my camera and I'm going to vlog my entire plastic surgery experience in Mexico because not only do I want to have a video out there for people considering plastic surgery or plastic surgery in Mexico or both, I want to document it for you guys to show you what the process is for having plastic surgery, what the recovery is like, the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm going to share it all here on my channel. So make sure you're subscribed and your bell's on because you're certainly not going to want to miss that. And of course, check out the description box for everything I shared with you today. And of course, come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Thank you guys again for everything. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.